This is KGW News at Noon. Find the defendant guilty. Dante Wright's murder trial has come to an end. Former police officer Kim Potter, you see her there, has been found guilty of both first and second degree manslaughter. Welcome to the News at Noon, I'm Drew Carney. Potter was a Minnesota police officer when she shot and killed the 20-year-old Dante Wright during an April 11th traffic stop. She thought she was using her taser, but instead she fired her gun. The jury began deliberating on Monday and finished just a few minutes ago. State sentencing guidelines there in Minnesota call for a maximum term of just over seven years in prison for a first degree manslaughter conviction and four years in prison for a second degree manslaughter conviction. But prosecutors have also said they plan to push for longer sentences for Potter. Now to an update on a local story we first told you about last week. Police have arrested the man they believe tried to kidnap a six year old boy in the Pearl District and that man will be in court later this afternoon. Surveillance video showed what happened last week and it also shows the boy's dad stepping in to stop the kidnapping. Yesterday, someone spotted the suspect in that video, 30 year old Eric Alexander, and they called 911. Police arrested Alexander near Northwest 10th and Davis, the same neighborhood where that attempted kidnapping took place. Court records show the suspect has been living on the streets for some time. He has past convictions for burglary, theft, ID theft, and he was also wanted for a probation violation. Detectives say they know of at least four other instances where people were concerned enough by his behavior to call 911. Meanwhile, the city of Portland will pay a $100,000 settlement to a man who was part of a protest during the summer of last year. So that man filed a lawsuit saying he was simply standing at that protest with a sign in his hand, but he wound up getting pepper sprayed, thrown to the ground and arrested. Take a look. So that video shows police trying to take Dmitry Stoyanov's sign. He was in a public park that day, encouraging people to vote as part of a Black Lives Matter protest. Stoyanov's lawyer says a Portland police sergeant ordered the arrest of anyone at that protest with a weapon, but Stoyanov never used his sign as a weapon and never even moved in the direction of the officers that were there. Here's Stoyanov's lawyer talking more about what happened to his client that day for daring to passively refuse to allow police to do whatever illegal thing they wanted, he was attacked. It's not just a few bad apples, it's a police and city culture that allows bad apples to thrive and make other apples rot. City commissioners voted unanimously to award the settlement. Commissioner Joanne Hardesty also apologized to Stoyanov. The Oregonian reports that, including this case, the city will have paid out at least $335,000 this year to settle protest related lawsuits that involve police. All right, we know Christmas week is always a busy travel week. Add a winter storm to the mix and you've got the potential for problems on the road. We also know I-5 near the Oregon California border is oftentimes a trouble spot during the winter. So last week, the southbound lanes of I-5 in that area were shut down for more than 30 hours. ODOT says it has crews on standby ready for snowy conditions this week. It's going to be a struggle, and so we're going to be out there. We're going to keep uh, uh, th that highway clean and swept as best we can, but we really need the public to be prepared. ODOT's advice to travelers is number one, keep track of road conditions on trip check, and number two, make sure you pack emergency supplies in your car just in case. Rod, we were uh, talking just a few minutes ago in the Weather Center about those conditions along the, uh, the pass there on Mount Hood. Yeah, so uh, that's where the problems are right now. We have a winter storm warning currently for the Cascades. That storm warning actually will expire tonight and then a brand new one begins before daybreak tomorrow morning. So a couple of very snowy days. There's Timberline Lodge, it's 21 degrees with west winds blowing to 30 miles per hour. So that's cold. I want to show you the ski report because the amounts are impressive. So the last 24 hours, Timberline 11, they now have a base over 70. Meadows has picked up 10, a base over 60. Ski Bowl's base has reached 50. It hasn't been as snowy uh, overall down a Bachelor, but they picked up nine and they're now sitting with a 40 inch base. The Cascade passes are all very snow covered. 27 degrees. There's Government Camp. Santee M. Look at all the traffic on it. You can barely see the road, right? And Willamette well, Pass, 26 degrees, absolutely just as buried. The news is good if you're going to the coast at any point today or driving 
into the valley. 37 degrees, nice and toasty at 1400 feet on Highway 26. That's just uh, rain showers. The radar uh, here on the west side, not much really up and down I-5. We're dry in Portland and Salem. We'll see spotty showers the remainder of today at best with some sun breaks. We're currently at 47 degrees. I think that's about as warm as we go. We'll stay in the 40s into tonight. Tomorrow again, another weather system rolls in and then we'll update the snow picture. I have made some changes for a Christmas weekend and next week coming up. All right, that report from Rod on the way in about 10 minutes. Right now, though, we want to get to the latest on the Omicron variant because there are now confirmed cases in all 50 states. After it was first discovered in South Africa, the initial Omicron case here in the U.S. was reported in San Francisco back on December 1st. So think about that for a moment. That means it took exactly three weeks for the variant to spread across the entire country. A surge in COVID cases is canceling and postponing events everywhere right now, including right here in Portland. Let's start with tonight's Blazers game at the Moda Center against the Brooklyn Nets. It is postponed. The NBA decided that yesterday. The bottom line here, there are so many Nets players that either have COVID or have to quarantine for exposure that the Nets don't have enough players to put on the court. So again, tonight's game postponed. Meanwhile, the holiday drag show at the Newmark Theater in downtown Portland is canceled after several company members tested positive for COVID. It's basically another hard hit for an industry that's already been struggling. You know, we've just come out of the last 18 months in pretty, pretty bad financial shape, you know, having lost all of our business for so long. Um, and things were looking really good for us. We have a lot of shows on the books. We also want to mention that the Portland Bridal Show at the Oregon Convention was scheduled for the middle of January. That show has already been canceled next month again because of COVID concerns. Demand for COVID tests are soaring right now, leaving many drugstores sold out of home tests and many drive through appointments hard to come by. The company Curative is teaming up with the Oregon Health Authority to offer rapid tests around the state of Oregon. The CEO of Curative says demand has doubled here over the last few days. So they still recommend appointments, but they'll also take walk-ups. And Curative is planning to open 10 more Oregon testing sites next month, including four sites in the Portland metro area. You can find more information about this story at KGW.com. Well, this latest surge right around the holidays can be emotionally draining for some people, but a University of Washington expert has a message about COVID fatigue. The problem is, is that our healthcare system can't handle this. And then the problem that we risk is not necessarily that we can't take care of the people with COVID. It's that we can't take care of the people who have cancer and who have trauma and who have, uh, you know, all those other things, congenital disorders and who need elective surgery. And it trickles down to all those other things. So it actually is a huge healthcare disaster for everyone, even if you don't have it. So right now in Washington, about 15% of people in the ICU are there with COVID. Now, that number may seem low to you, but the State Hospital Association is warning that it's actually an alarmingly high level, especially with Omicron here. One more story about COVID right now. New data from the University of Washington predicts 3 billion people will be infected with the Omicron variant over the next few months. That equals about 40% of the entire world's population. Some of that University of Washington data also predicts the worst time for this will be next month, mid-January, with 35 million global infections every day, which is nearly three times, three times the amount we saw during the peak of Delta back in April.